We are back with a Today exclusive <laughs> and an important message from a college football star. That's right. After three seasons with Ohio State University, Harry Miller here announced he would be medically retiring, revealing mental health struggles that pushed him to the brink. And we're going to speak to Harry in just a moment. But first, a bit more about his story. That offensive line is doing such a great job up front. At six foot four and over 300 pounds, nothing gets past Ohio State's standout offensive lineman, Harry Miller, a five star recruit from Georgia. He was selected as the second ranked center in the nation before signing on to the team. And in his second season, he helped lead the Buckeyes to a Big Ten championship win. Touchdown, Buckeyes! But when Miller rarely took the field last year, many Ohio State fans began asking, what's wrong with Harry Miller? And now Miller is breaking his silence. Announcing on social media, he is medically retiring from football, writing, prior to the season last year, I told Coach Day of my intention to kill myself. Ohio State University head coach Ryan Day took action, referring Miller to mental health experts. And after a few weeks of professional help, he returned to the game. But the pain did not go away. He writes, I tried my luck at football once again with scars on my wrists and throat. Maybe the scars were hard to see with my wrists taped up. He continued, they are hard to see and they're easy to hide, but they sure do hurt. There was a dead man on the television set, but nobody knew it. Those scars, he says, are reminders of his struggles. His story coming as a shock to the college football community. Miller is a powerhouse on the field and off. The starting lineman was named an academic All-Big Ten honoree. He's a college junior studying mechanical engineering. When looking at like a standard continuum of time chronology. And has a 4.0 GPA. Prior to Ohio State, Miller was named valedictorian of his high school class. I would first like to express how grateful I am to be in the position that God has placed me in. In his free time, Miller volunteers in Ohio and abroad. Ready, go! Making mission trips to Nicaragua, where he helps to build homes and provide food and other aid to families there. <laughs> and now, Miller is on a new mission, hoping his story will encourage others to speak up and seek help. We are really honored, mm -hmm. that's the word, to have mm -hmm. Harry here this morning yeah. to help share your story. It's good to see you. How, how are you I, feeling? How are you doing? I feel really good. I get emotional seeing um, those videos of, um, there was Santiago with Sayana, Juniette, um, all the kids and, and mothers I'm really close with in Nicaragua. We were just there last week. And um, I get uh, emotional uh -huh. seeing them. Harry, you're so deep. Your yeah. heart is so big, and yeah. you have now put it out there for the world to see yeah. in this extraordinary piece of writing that mm -hmm. explains so well what I think many have really struggled to explain or understand about mental health, especially for mm -hmm. someone like you. We mm -hmm. look at you, Harry, and you know the world thinks, there's a kid who has it mm -hmm. all. And you try to explain mm -hmm. why it is that you can still hurt so deeply. Yeah, I was um, talking with Carson before coming on, and... We were sort of describing it like like the weather, and um, you go outside and you see it's raining, and people say, "How about the weather today?" And you've got instead of raining cats and dogs, it's it's raining young people off of buildings, and you look around and you say, "Something's going on right now," and um, something needs to happen. Mm -hmm. And um, the the dilemma is that nobody has to say something, but that is precisely why somebody has to say something. And um, I had no intention of um, this happening the way it did. And people have called me brave, but to me it just felt like not dying and it felt like being honest. And um, maybe bravery is just being honest when it would be easier not to. Um, and if that's bravery, then so be it. But I've just been really grateful um, to, one, receive the help I have, and then, two, to have learned some things that I can share with others. You were talking about those kids in Nicaragua and they're beautiful kids, and I was thinking about you as a kid. At eight years old, you said to your mom, I want to kill myself yeah. as a little boy, and those feelings just didn't go away. Yeah, they sort of... Um, I, got, I got treatment when I was young, and um, I guess I've always been anxious and depressed, and uh, years passed. I, I, I felt good in high school. Um, got to college and it's just sort of difficult you've you've got these young people being thrusted under these bright lights and as a student athlete it's 
you know, you play a game, it's a hard game, perhaps you made a lot of mistakes, and people will send you messages saying, uh, transfer, you suck. Some people get death threats that I know on the team, and um, I'm trying to text my mom, that's the first thing I see, and then, you know, you can't worry about it too much because you've got an exam the next day, and you have that for weeks and then months, and by the end of the semester, and you're like, what is happening right now? And um, it just breaks my heart. While I was going through my therapy, I was seeing stories of Miss Americas and, and, and athletes all over the board. And um, I just kept thinking, if only if somebody would just say something. Hmm. And, um, I'm, and I'm just really grateful that I was able to have received the, the care and love and affection that I did so that I could. What's really great about this story, Harry, is that you're here. You know, we'd be covering this story, and we have before so many times without yeah. you being here. You would have been reduced, as you wrote, to being initials on the back of the Buckeye helmet. Mm. And you were okay with that at the time. But you're not, and you're here. And I think for people watching this, or people who will see this, and you and I both, have we've talked about this, there's so many millions of people suffering in silence. Yeah. Um, when you were on the brink, talk to somebody watching this right now, and you know exactly how they feel. Yeah. You had Coach Day. I know you turned to Coach Day, but... Shine some light on them to help them so they can still be around for their, their part of their story. Yeah, is there a camera? Yeah, look at? yeah right there. Um, and it's so hard. I realized the weight of words when I was, um, when I was, when you're preparing to not be able to say words anymore, you realize how important your words are. And even now, they feel so clumsy <laughs> speaking about it now. And I would just say, um, hope is just pretending to believe in something until one day you don't have to pretend anymore. And right now, you have all the logic, all the rationale in the world to give up on it. But I'll just ask, pretend for a little bit. And then one day, you won't have to pretend anymore, and you'll be happy. And um, I'm just so grateful. And I, we had a crazy debacle trying to get back from Nicaragua. We, we flew in, and I sat next to this mother named Sadie and a beautiful boy named Ivan. And it shattered me because so I realized how easily I would have given that up. Mm. I'm just so grateful, and I would just ask to keep pretending, and then one day you won't have to, and you'll be so glad that you did. Um, and that's the only advice I think I could muster. Powerful words. Mm. Mm. You have so much to give this world. <laughs> you just did it in yeah. those moments. You clearly have a heart for mm -hmm. service and helping others. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> you're still in school. You told me you had midterms this week. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's heavy. Professors, don't, yeah, don't hold yeah. it on. No, be nice to Harry. Yeah. Maybe you could help the National Co uh, Collegiate Association or whoever it is on a national level help because it's the, the lights are so bright. I think of Katie Meyer yeah. at Stanford, the goalkeeper. Yeah. Um, and you, like you said, like 100,000 people one day and the next day, you have to sit in class and take a test. Like, that's a lot. People aren't yeah, equipped for that. Lot. Maybe maybe that's your calling now. Maybe God say, hey, man, like you're going to save like a lot of lives. Yeah, who knows? Yeah. Yesterday, I think I got scammed by a guy dressed in monk's clothing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so either I'm down. I'm either oh, you got I'm, the bracelet? Either I'm, yeah. Welcome to New York, bro. <laughs> either I'm, I'm down $5 or I should be expecting total enlightenment in about yes. three hours. <laughs> <laughs> so wish me luck. I know. Everybody cross your fingers. People don't usually come to the Today Show for enlightenment, but I think you've given yeah. us some yeah, I hope so. You Definitely. really have. You can feel it. You yeah. can really feel it. What a, what a door you've walked through. Yeah. And just, mm -hmm. we're so grateful that thank you're you here. And Mary, thank you. Thank so you. Many thank you. That was really precious. Yeah, we're grateful for you. Keep in touch with us. Coach yeah. Day, Absolutely. too. Yes. I think your mission is just yeah. starting. Yeah. yeah. So I hope so. Uh -huh. I hope so. Oh, Harry. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Appreciate it, Harry. Mm -hmm. Important reminder, if you know somebody who is in crisis, you can call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. As you see there, the number is on the screen, or you can text HOME to 741-741 to reach the text mm -hmm. line as well. You're the man, Harry. Thanks, bro. Thanks, Harry. Yeah, thank you, guys. Harry, okay. an honor.